Not a bad view, huh? Pretty good. We just had like an hour at least of really good sailing. Nice. It's light wind, but really beautiful conditions. And I think I found my new favorite spot in this chair. Uh, I can sit here with my feet and I have really good visibility. I'm really glad that the wind worked out in our favor. Uh, the forecast originally showed for like 20 knots out of the north today. We've been trying to meet up with Delos for the past three days, but the wind's hard out of the north, so we can't make our way north very much. And then we woke up and it was light and we checked the new forecast and it was like super calm. So we got underway and we're like an hour away from Agua Verde. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go and share naked with Delos. Feel? Yeah. How's that feel? I don't know if I've processed it yet. Like it's <laughs> kind of weird. I haven't seen the boat in a super long time. Yeah. Last time we were on Delos was November, December of 2019. I know, I was thinking that today. It's so been it's like three, almost three and a half years. Like three and a half years since we lived aboard Delos. We saw Brian and Karen at the boat show, but it was so, so hectic with everybody around that it was just kind of gnarly. So yeah, it feels a little bit surreal. It's kind of like 13 years in the making mm -hmm. of starting this journey and then ending up here on the same acreage with Brian and Delos is pretty meaningful for us and for Cruises Academy and all the things. Since the age of 23, I was on board Delos, sailing around the world. We created an amazing community, business, and life together over the period of 10 years. From getting attacked by a barracuda to sailing the Southern Ocean, we explored the far corners of the world and made some amazing memories. Brian and I grew as brothers and eventually we both found our perfect partners. And now here I am, creating another journey with Latika and Cruisers Academy, about to cross paths with that previous chapter. The stars really had to align for this to happen in Mexico, and I don't think I really realized how much this would mean to me until this moment. So yeah, I'm stoked. I'm excited to share an anchor and be on separate boats. <laughs> <laughs> Live together but apart. That's about all I think right now. See? Check in after all the tequila shots. Copy that. <laughs> See, now I get nervous. It's <laughs> <Right? laughs> a big moment. <laughs> right, I start moaning over, no emotions until now. <laughs> What's up? Hi. Hey, brother. Hey. Good to see you. Hey, good to be on board. So, finally made it. Yeah, thank yeah. you. We're going to warm up a little more. Yeah, <laughs> she's getting better. Hey, Kaza. How are you? We are stoked to share that this video is sponsored by AG1. We've been drinking AG1 aboard Lentica for over a year now, and it matches perfectly with living aboard a sailboat. It's a super easy way to do something good for yourself each morning. It takes up very little space, which is really important on a sailboat, and it's delicious. So drinking AG1 has become a ritual aboard Lentica every single morning. It's super simple. You have this nice little bottle. You put a scoop of AG1 inside, you add water, shake it up, drink it down, and boom! You get 75 vitamins and minerals. You get antioxidants to support the immune system, and you get probiotics to support gut health. I've definitely noticed a difference in my energy throughout the day, and my personal favorite thing is that it's packed with adaptogens and superfoods that counteract free radicals. So if you'd like to start your day by doing something truly good for yourself, go to athleticgreens.com forward slash cruisers academy. If you go there, you're going to get five free travel packs and a free year supply of D3K3 with your first order. After some hugs and drinks, the first order of business was to get on board Delos and see the good old Viber, an area no bigger than a queen size bed where I lived for most of my 20s. I didn't bring any sunglasses. Yeah, you didn't throw in your head dog. Oh, sick. Dad <laughs> 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 you know, move. Dad move if I'm wearing a pair, and then I have a pair up here too. I'd be like, where are my freaking sunglasses, kids? <laughs> Hello? Hi. You wanna go check out the V-Burst <laughs> Yeah, I'll check it out. See how it's been converted? I haven't been up there yet. <laughs> Very slowly. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this. Whoa. Whoa. Dang, it looks cool in here. It does. How does it feel being up here? Everything feels lower. Mm. Like the beds and stuff, I feel like they were higher. 
but maybe I was shorter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've grown a lot in the last few years, huh? Um, yeah, I know. It, it feels familiar. <laughs> it's not, that used to be Brady's tent, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I actually used to live in this tent. You used to fit, used to fit, in, there. fit in there. Remember that? <laughs> I like what you guys have done with the tent. <laughs> no, that ten years of lived in the small room for ten years. It's crazy. Nice and cozy. That was my front door. I used to crawl out of it every morning. Yeah, feels like a great chapter, and I come in here and feel a lot of good energy from this place. Mm -hmm. We only had a few days together because we had students flying in for a cruising course, and Delos had to start heading south to prepare for their Pacific crossing. But we definitely made the most of those few days. Salud, family. Did you make kind of to Don Julio. Don Julio. Oh. Mm -hmm. Spinnaker. We have the spinnaker. Plans to sail downwind. I think the next anchorage is like 10 miles or so. Delos is over there getting their spinnaker set up. And hopefully, if we can do this correctly, we can get uh, Lantique and Delos spinnakering together. Delos, Delos, Lantica on 6'9. Hi, Lantica on 6'9. How you doing? Well, we're pretty good. Got the spinnaker uh, up in the sock and ready to do this thing. Okay, cool. Um, we'll go ahead and pull up the hook and get underway. Cool. Ludica standing by 6'9. Pleasure Channel. Clear. Woo! Just like that, four days had flown by, and it was time to sail our separate ways. Well, that was a wild few days. It was a wild few days. Emotional few days, too. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I'm really glad that happened. A lot had to align for us to meet up and hang out. So the stars basically aligned and we got to hang out for like four days. <laughs> Hi guys. Never let go, Jack. <laughs> Thank you so much for everything. It's kind of crazy how our schedules are just whoosh, passing right by each other. But yeah, it was really nice. Super grateful to hang out with them. Love you guys. Bye guys. Bye. See you next time. See you next time. It's a big culmination for me. like. I don't know, the last video on Delos, I remember when we left just saying like, one day we're gonna share an anchorage with Delos on our own boat. So many years, I've always talked about balance in life and balance and balance and balance. Now I like, after so many years of working towards that goal, it's actually happening now where I've always wanted to live six months on a boat and then six months on land or in the mountains or something. Mm -hmm. And now it's like happened. So I know we don't have like, set plans but yep. we definitely have a lot of ideas yep for what we want to do in the future and do you just want to share some of them yeah i've been thinking about doing like a cruiser university like charter thing for a long time getting a catamaran or a monohull and inviting the Delos tribe out um, for weeks at a time and to learn cruising not as like a here's your cocktail charter but like this is how a boat works this is how to anchor this is what to look out for, this is how to provision, this is how to check weather, all that kind of cool stuff that goes along with sailing. Um, when that day is here, it's really cool. Super special. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Today is super exciting, we're picking up crew. Um, one's <laughs> flying in from Tahoe, which is where Phoebe came from. They had 12 feet of snow in the last eight days. So we're down here, jealous, 
I don't think I've had so much FOMO about missing the snow, but also I'm in shorts and no shoes in Mexico. It's gonna be interesting to combine filming with this week's trip because all the other trips we haven't really filmed. We've just been really focused on teaching and making sure the cruising school is growing and everything's going smoothly. So to add filming to the list of the already complicated skill set and job is uh, a little bit daunting. But this week we have two crew that have been with us before and we also have Phoebe to help. So I think we'll have the bandwidth to be able to film some stuff and share what it's like to be on an official Cruisers Academy cruising trip. Let's do it. How's it going, right man? Here. Good to see you. <laughs> really, you know how good it is? I bet. What's up, Ryan? Right, man, How's how it going, you? dude? Good to see yeah, you, man. Too. Well, welcome to the sunshine. You just came from 12 foot of snow. Dude, it's just how we're talking about. This is pounding. After getting everyone back to Lantica, it was time to get our crew settled and kick off the course. We'd be spending the next week together exploring the islands of La Paz, which meant these guys would get a ton of hands-on sailing experience, learning about weather forecasting, navigation, boat systems, anchoring, and best practices that we use to run Lentica. But we always like to learn about people's personal sailing goals so we can customize the course to them. This week, we had Ryan from Texas, who already owns his own 30-foot sailboat. But within the next few years, he wants to buy a bigger cruising boat, quit his job, and sail the world. Glenn, from Tahoe, is newer to sailing, but after this trip, he bought a racing sailboat on Lake Tahoe and has been getting his family tuned in to what it means to be a sailor. Okay, first things first, who wants a burrito? Meat? Meat. Meat? No meat. No meat? Ah, first things first, let's have a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm looking at the weather, like, you know, what, what are our options, right? And how, what's our distances to get there? We can't look at distances and, and predict wind. So we have to go to Navionics for that. We jumped straight into our first lesson of the course by going over how we use predict wind and Navionics to plan where we want to go and when. We'd be revisiting these apps daily, but we decided to save the deep dive on this lesson and head out for a shakedown sail to get to our first anchorage. Roger, anchors up! Here's one end of the halyard. It runs forward through those blocks all the way up the mast, out the top side on another block and back down again. And we're gonna grab that end and attach it to the head of the sail. So when we pull on this end, it's gonna hoist the head of the sail. See how the boom is starting to go in line with the wind, right? Yeah. So even though the boat can't go in the iron, the sail can go in the iron. So I think, I think we're close enough that we could get it up. Okay, I'll use this a little bit more. Cool. Okay, and then Good. do you want to um, hoist, Ryan? Yeah. <laughs>
force pulling. And if I go like this, that's how I'm gonna ease. See how much tension this has on it? Okay, so if I just go at ease, I'm not in control of the line. So I'm gonna pass it like this, okay? And then to get it back through, I'm gonna go through the self tailor. See how I'm not letting my fingers get in between? Back through here, nice and slow. Pull it tight. And then I probably need to trim a little bit again. Um, so just starting up here, GPS speed. That's our actual speed over ground, okay. over land. Water speed is the, the speed the boat's moving through the water. So the reason that those can be different is if you're going against the current or with the current. Exactly. Uh, this is our heading. So it's the way the boat's Does that going. make sense to me? Yeah. Uh, I was trying to wrap my head around it. Like right now, well back there, the current is going out with us. Yeah. Oh, so our yeah. water speed is less yes. than our actual speed. I see. Okay. Whereas it was the other way around, yeah. the current was against us, our water speed might be like eight knots, but yeah. really we're only going like four over ground. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. So it's about a knot of current right now. That's like, like wind that. in a pyramid. Yep. Same yeah. deal. Mm -hmm. water. Exactly. Yep. And then over on this side is our wind section. So this is gonna be the, the T is our true wind, how that's hitting the boat. So that's if we were sitting perfectly still, that would be our wind, um, which is our wind speed right here, true wind speed. So you see how that's 10, 11? Yeah. Our apparent wind speed is 15, 16, right? That's because we're going into the wind. At, it's, it's, it's doing the vectors, right? It's yeah. not exactly adding, but the vectors make it higher. So we're feeling, if you put your hand out, you feel 17 knots. You don't feel 10 knots. Right. If we were sitting still, we would feel 10. You try not to forget me then. Apparent wind angle. So that's how far off the bow the wind is hitting the boat. So most boats can sail maybe 45, like most cruising boats, 45 degrees or something into like that, the into the wind. Um, race boats can go a lot further. You guys are probably like 30s, right? Yeah. This boat can actually do like 35, okay. 40. Nice. So it's really good for a heavy cruising boat. It'll start, it'll Huge be able to sail. Huge plus to the passport. Yeah. Ready to attack? Ready! Ready. Attacking. shooting for a Lobos, which is this spot right up here. Yeah. So you can see we're gonna have to tack again yeah. before we get in there. Yeah. A couple um, more tacks. Yeah, a couple more. All right, That's good. it, and then once you, once you go and grab the helm, you tell them, got it. <laughs> yep, done. All right, I got it. <laughs> cool, so the, the first thing you'll probably feel is the boat will want to turn slightly to port. Uh -huh. So this is the center helm. Okay. So you can tell that in order to keep the boat going straight, <laughs> Thank you. In order to keep the boat going straight, you kind of have to keep a little bit of starboard, right? Yeah. So you'll be able to feel like how we could feel if you point too high. Um, so right now, if you just come up a little bit more to port, uh -huh. and whenever you're going to port or into the wind, you don't really necessarily have to turn. Just let pressure off a little it'll, bit. It'll turn naturally. It'll turn naturally nice and slow. Okay. And then watch the front of the main. See how it's starting to bubble? Yeah. The luff there yeah. is starting to, yeah. so that's about as far as you can go. So then you can come back a little bit and then take a reference point on land. And yeah. like, okay, when that stanchion is with that mountain peak. Right. That feels good. Okay. And then go back and forth there. And then every once in a while, it's good to check. See, we're at 36 here, 37. Yeah. So you're coming back to 40, yeah. 41, right yeah. there. Do you want me to leave this on or do you want me to take it away? No, take it away. <laughs> Good. There you go. Good job. You, you feel it right there. Right yeah, right yeah. there, that spot. Well, sailing doesn't get a lot nicer than this, honestly. <laughs> we have like 11 knots of wind. We are reaching up around this island. It's flat calm, the boat is just like slicing through the water perfectly. We're going like four and a half, five knots. Sunshine, a 
drink in hand, good people, beautiful scenery. Like, just burn this good moment stuff. into your head. Etch it. <laughs> Etch it in. <laughs> it's amazing. We're gonna try and get the drone up and see if we can get us tacking through these islands up here. It's really cool. Okay, so, hey Phoebe. Phoebe, can you direct us so that we don't go through that light teal water? Okay, so are we on a good course right here? More starboard. Okay, a little more starboard. The charts here aren't like perfectly accurate, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, let go, let go, let go. That little robot. I can hear Brady up on the deck. Do you see the drone, Phoebe? Are we gonna hit it? Are we gonna hit it? <laughs> I hope not. As we sailed our way up the western side of Espiritu Santo, we marveled at the seemingly endless amounts of protected anchorages we could choose from. Each one a little more or less protected from the wind and swell, depending on where it was blowing from that day. This dramatic island made up of alternating layers of lava and volcanic ash is scattered with massive cactus, which creates an insane contrast with the glowing turquoise waters that surround its shores. Espiritu sits closely with its sister island, Isla Partida, and is barely separated by this narrow channel that we were pretty keen to explore. So it was time to drop the hook and see what we found. Brady <laughs> is gonna try and take Sharky snorkeling. We have a big dreams of getting her diving one day. Like picture a big bell over her head down on the bottom walking around. But. Okay. <laughs> Dorky side note, I took a minute to pop the idea of this image into an AI image generator. And I felt like any Sharky fans out there would get a kick out of these. But she gonna do it. this is our baby step Seriously. to getting to that point. <laughs> and so we got our little shark cam set up, and there we go. how to get in the water while snorkeling. <laughs> Knees up here. Uh -huh. You never snorkeled before. Yep, perfect. So now tuck it, tuck your belly down a little bit lower. Yep, now cover your face with your mask like this. Like uh -huh. both your hands over your eyes and your mouth. <laughs> and then front roll in. That was so good. <laughs> the water was finally warming up in the Sea of Cortez. So it was time to give Latika's underbelly a good scrubbing. There was also a bit of water coming in the bilge from the ironically named Tripless Shaft Seal, but we needed Lentica to be out of the water to tackle that project, so it would have to wait until the end of the season. Oh man, I don't know. I was just kind of sitting here trying to come up with those thoughts. It's uh, blowing my expectations out of the water, for sure. It's really pretty beautiful. Like all the water is super clear, and then when you go hiking, you actually have like trees and cactus and life. I thought it was gonna be way more deserty and just like shrubs, but it's like you're in, I don't know, there's like red rock and cool formations. It's not just like desert sand. 
which I didn't expect. I would be able to look back at the water and see when Tika's sitting <laughs> out there. Oh, uh, it's, yeah. That's a lot, a lot um, came into... What am I trying to say? Come into play, came full circle. <laughs> a lot of hard work. Added. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for we've probably been thinking about this exact moment for over three years of like good weather, beautiful clear anchorage, and good people, and all the things. So it's been a hell of a challenge and ride to get to this point. But Lentica's right there, and we're here with our students. It's really cool, super special. And stoked to continue on. Yeah. If you'd like to learn more about joining us for a cruising course on Lentica, head over to our website to check out which dates still have spots available. Huge thank you to our patrons for making these videos possible. We love you guys and we're doing our best to put videos out more regularly and your support goes a long way. Even subscribing or dropping us a comment below adds up to more than you realize. <laughs> I can't read. That's true. <laughs> Sharky's the hero that we don't deserve. <laughs>